Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rockets. Today we're going to be continuing the development and testing of our new PVC case motor that we call the Super Monkey 2022. So this is part two in the video series for this particular motor development. If you haven't watched part one, there'll be a link at the end of this video and there's also a link down in the description. I would encourage you to take a look at that. It really covers the components that we used, the development process, and also some ground testing, which includes a really nice explosion as well. So take a look at that video when you get a chance as well. So let's cover the design of this particular model and the changes that we've made since the last one. At the end of the last video, we had just completed the second ground test for this model of motor. Now, even though the casing didn't explode on that ground test using a number 26 nozzle hole, um, it's very important to note that the nozzle washer and the retaining ring got blown out of the plastic piece because of an overheating issue before we had consumed all the fuel which means we may not have reached the maximum pressures capable for this motor before that nozzle blew out. So we don't really know if this casing can hold up to the maximum pressures of a number 26 nozzle, but that's what we're gonna find out today. So if you haven't watched the previous video, let me just take a minute to go over the components that make up this motor. At the top here for the bulkhead, we just have an inch and a half PVC cap. We've put in a, a flat surface of rockite anchoring cement at the bottom that protects that surface uh, from blowing out from the excessive heat in the center of the motor. The fuel cell itself is a piece of inch and a half Schedule 40 PVC, nine inches long. The fuel has been cast directly in there. There's a paper liner first and then the flexi fuel is cast in there. The flexi fuel is a combination of potassium nitrate, powdered sugar, and corn syrup. And we've got videos on how that's made as well on the channel. So that's the cell for the fuel. And then at the bottom, we have this PVC coupling piece, which is a slip coupling that'll get glued onto the fuel cell. And the other end is uh, inch and a half female pipe threads. Now those components are all the same that we've been using all along for the other two models that we did in part one of this video series. The difference that we've got today is this nozzle. Let's take a minute to take a look at the test nozzles that we were using before and compare that to our finished nozzle that we're going to be using on this one. So on the bottom of the motor, it has this PVC coupling, which has inch and a half PVC threads. And then we just used this threaded piece of steel and a washer with a number 26 opening in the center. And that simply goes into the PVC and the threaded pipe piece just goes in and tightens up against that to hold that in place. And that works good as a temporary nozzle. But that's what overheated because it was exposed to those exit gases and this entire piece got super hot and pushed out of the plastic threads. So the new nozzle is an all one piece steel assembly. It has a 35 degree half angle for the convergent and a 12 degree half angle for the divergent and a number 26 nozzle hole in the center. It was started out as two pieces. I constructed the nozzle itself on the lathe and then I took that to the welding shop and had them TIG weld the retaining ring to that nozzle. Now it's very similar to the design that we were using on our original Super Monkey motor with the convergent and divergent except that I didn't do the shaping on the outside of the nozzle. Now that does make this a lot heavier because it has a lot more steel without that material taken off. But it is just a test nozzle and the reason I left that on there was it gives a lot more steel mass right around the area here of the um, opening so that I'm hoping that that mass will absorb most of the heat instead of bleeding that heat out to the threads where it can heat up the plastic and blow this out of the motor. 
I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this motor, which just basically is gluing the end cap on with PVC cement, gluing the bottom piece on with PVC cement, and then we'll put thread tape on the uh, threads here and tighten the nozzle assembly in place. Now, as I see it, there's basically three possibilities of what could happen when we get out to the test site. Um, this could go perfectly fine. We get a good amount of thrust and we're basically done with the design of this motor. Um, there's also the possibility that uh, the number 26 nozzle is still a little bit too small for this casing and we do end up blowing up the casing like we did with the first one. And then there's the possibility that we still get a overheating issue down here where the nozzle gets so hot that it gets blown out of those plastic threads like it did with the second model. So we're going to get this glued together and we'll get out to the test site and we'll take a look at what happens. So that was a really nice ground test, very successful. Uh, as you can see, we got uh, a peak of 90 pounds of thrust from this. Now, that's pretty much going to be the end of the development for this particular motor because I don't think we want to take this any further. We found out what we needed to find out. Um, it requires a lot of effort and parts to create the motor uh, each time you want to launch it, unlike um, our other casing where it's completely reusable. So we are probably going to try and target uh, some more of that design where you don't have to keep throwing away a lot of the rocket motor. But it's interesting to note, uh, this was 9 inches of fuel and we got about 90 pounds of thrust out of it. In our RoboMonkey motor that we've launched several times now, it's very dependable, it uses 6 inches of fuel and we get about 60 pounds of thrust. If you follow that logic, what we're basically seeing is that we get about 10 pounds for every inch of fuel that we have in this size of a motor. So it would be easier and simpler for us to simply take this design and put in a longer piece of aluminum pipe nipple in the middle here and make it a 9 inch motor instead of a 6 inch motor. We'd have to adjust the nozzle appropriately for that volume of fuel, but we should be able to achieve about the same pressures as we're getting in this one with a completely reusable casing. Uh, I weighed them out to see what the comparison is here as well, because weight is always important. Uh, this weighs uh, 659 grams empty, and this one here weighs 662 grams empty. So they're only 3 grams difference, which is a sheet of paper. So um, even if we extended this another 3 inches, most of the weight that's involved in this, and also in this, to be honest, is the, the steel. And on this one, it's the steel end cap and the steel nozzle assembly. So increasing the length of this another three inches would not increase the amount of steel, it would just increase the amount of aluminum. So yes, we'd go up in weight a little bit, but not very much. And I still think we'd get a better um, motor than, than we have in this PVC one, more dependable, um, and we could probably even get more thrust since we can do a little bit of a smaller nozzle with the full aluminum and steel casing. So that's uh, where we're probably going to put most of our time uh, in the near future is some more motor development but uh, in reusable casings rather than the PVC casing. But this was a really interesting experiment um, and it proved that we could do a, a pretty powerful motor in this casing with 90 pounds of thrust. That's actually really impressive. It's more than what we're launching rockets with right now. So that completes our series for the new Super Monkey 2022. Now, we are still working on a really big motor, and there'll be a link to that at the end of this video as well. We're still working on that series, and we're still developing that design. So, if you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe. Also, don't forget to click the like button, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.